Your number three edge is Nolan Smith from Georgia. He won the Pajama Olympics. He did. And he was one that when you went, damn, the Pajama Olympics made me look at him and think highly of him. And then when you turn on the film, you go, oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, when you want to talk about like Von Miller type pass rushers, and again, I know I've just said J.J. Watt. I'm giving everybody the ultimate version to yeah. picture in their brain. If everything works out in their Everything some, works yeah. out in their favor. But you, what I'm talking about is a guy that can be in some of the positions you've seen Von Miller go around the edge the last few years or a similar body type, right? Though This is your guy. This is your guy that has a chance to be Von Miller or let's just say, I don't want to say, you know, Von, of course, was the number two pick of the draft. Let's say Hassan Reddick, right, who's been kicking ass for the last three years and kicked ass for the Eagles last year, right? That's what he is. This is, yes, arguably the most explosive person in this draft. It really is. Let alone, like, silky, smooth mover. Like, just get low. Oh, I'm going this way. Wait. Oh, tackle. I got you to go upfield. Now I'm going to cut underneath like a running back and go the other way and go get the quarterback there. First step. You know, the bend we talk about that's so important. Power that for 239 is insanity in the membranity at times. We're going, this is a 330-pound tackle, and he's setting the edge with one arm and like, wait, if you run outside here, I'm going to throw you with the one arm and then go run down that running back. No problem, right? I mean, it's just there's nothing athletically you worry about with this guy at all. There's nothing strength-wise you worry about with this guy at all. Now, you just got to worry about what positions you put him in because, yeah, he's not the biggest human being in the world. But when you talk about pure athleticism, speeds, explosion, all of that, man, Nolan Smith is, is, is about as good as it gets in that department. Well, let's start with a 40-yard dash yeah. then here, Chris. I mean, yeah. We have some video of him doing it. 4.39 in the 40 was the second fastest by a defensive lineman since 2003. And here is a video of all of his teammates – the Back Georgia, in Georgia guys. yeah, watching it as he's going here. So he's Look at ready these to damn go. facilities. Oh, there he's going. Well, who's filming this? It's like a old phone or something like a flip phone. Doesn't look that fast either. This is in slow. Well, motion. they're hyped now. Oh, now they're jumping around. They're cheering. Um, yeah. So there's a good look. Well, at that was 40. a special moment. Yeah, it was cool. It was. I mean, you know, one, he's fresh off a pectoral injury, so like to even be at the combine and be able to perform that way. Too. They know what kind of freak this guy is. That's why they're all filming it. They're going, damn, our DN beats our receivers and our running backs in a lot of drills in the summer. Let's see what this freak's going to do right here. So that's why they're filming that. They knew that. But, and then he was disappointed. I mean, do you remember us having that conversation? Oh, remember? Right. He got off the phone and was like, damn, I, I could have run faster than that. That, that was like, that was as low, slow as it gets for me, 439, right? So, yeah, this is. You know, again, I said Hassan Reddick, Von Miller, Micah Parsons, right? It's that type of guy. Yeah, can play stand-up linebacker, you know, can be 3-4 outside linebacker. Oh, wait, it's third and 12 now. We need you to be like a wide nine technique, like a Seattle Nick Bosa type pass rusher. Just use your speed and your bend around the edge. I mean, like it, it's all. The movement's off the charts good. Great yeah. bend, change of direction. You know, play strength is great. Uh, can turn the corner with bend or stick his foot in the ground and turn the corner too, which I mean. Like, you know, there's bend of like, I'm low when I'm coming around the bend. And then every now and then there's like, I'm coming around the edge and I didn't get to get in that low position because maybe the lineman punched me. So I had to stay up. I didn't get to get low like that. All right, so now I just got to win with my speed. And then I got to be able to like maybe put my foot in the ground like a receiver and turn the corner to get to the quarterback. Like, he can do all of that. I mean, he plays hard. He's physical. He'll take on anybody, right? You know, he can get, like I told you, in some of the positions that only top-tier NFL pass rushers can get in. You know, again, that's that bend I'm talking about, that right. Lawrence Taylor, Von Miller, Khalil Mack position where you go. Is that like 
a speed skater, you know, on the inside lane who puts his hand down on the ground yeah. as he's going around the corner. It's almost like that. And that ability for him is as good as you're going to find. That's so fun watching speed skating right? when they do that. Yeah. Right? And they right. hit those well, little cones, this, go flying sometimes. These guys have those kind of legs and ass like that to do that kind of stuff. So Nolan's been on the radar for a long time back in high school, was the number one high school player in the country, according to 247sports.com. A 20th best all time. They compared him to Khalil Mack coming out of high school and then college at Georgia there. Uh, he's 6'2", 238, and so it's, he can run fast yeah. for a guy that size. Right. But a guy that size is also not the guy the size of the first two guys you've mentioned here. No, it's a different um, guy here. So no starting edge in the NFL last season was listed under 240 pounds. That's what Nolan's at right now. So a national scout for an NFC team uh, said this on NFL.com. You worry about him holding up for 17 games right. with his size. Right. I'm not worried about the toughness, but I just don't know if he can carry more weight without it slowing him down. Right. Yeah, I, and that's a fair thing. Again, you know, like we said, it's a big person's game, and he's going to be out on the edge there playing against the biggest people on planet Earth, Trent, the Trent Williams of the world he's going to have to deal with. So that's a fair concern. I mean, uh, that would concern me too. You know, and then he got hurt this year, as you saw. You know, but uh, it's one of those, again, where – I think he's a top 15 pick, right? And he's only going to get he's only going to get bigger and stronger, right? And and Pete, maybe you could tell me off the top of my head here, but like or I can even look. Hassan Reddick, what was he at the combine? You know, I know he was Hassan Reddick's definitely one of the best edge guys in football, yeah. right? I bet you I want to say at the combine he was like 230 something. Now he's a grown man, right? And he's above 240, so now he's not an edge guy that's under 240 start 61237 so go. very similar was a linebacker too which right. which kind of leads to this question Matt Hassan 4 does Nolan Smith from Georgia have the potential to also play inside linebacker in the NFL he may be more effective as an edge but could have the ability to rotate there on early downs I think he could yeah that's why I, that's what that's why I did write the Micah Parsons thing down right yeah. you know if you if a 4-3 team wanted to take him and just said hey let him play stand up linebacker then on third downs we'll you know slowly get him into Play in that position, but we'll see what's going to happen. Is exactly what happened to Hassan Reddick. I mean, not Hassan Reddick, or yeah, Hassan Reddick, or my, but more Micah Parsons. What I was trying to go for. Mm. We're going to go. Oh yeah, stand up linebacker is good, but holy shit, he's amazing, and nobody can block him on the edge. Let's stop that stand up linebacker shit and just let him go after the quarterback every play. Yeah, the, and I think ultimately that's what'll happen. Yeah, you compared him to Micah Parsons. The broad jump and the forty yard dash very similar to Micah. Uh, Micah is a little bit taller, just by like an inch and a half. Yeah, a little bit heavier, little by thicker. maybe ten pounds. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, very similar in body size. So, and then Micah, yeah, Micah right now is probably listed at high 240s, right? Is that kind of what he was listed at? Man, look where, at that gun. Look at that gun. It's just like he's filling it all up in the speed and the jump and the categories, like 99th percentile, and then everything else is in the 15th to 5 percentile. Yeah, well, that's the size that's stuff. Crazy. And that's what's good. That's where, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it that drastic. When you have to, you know, when you're, when you're 238, and you're playing edge pass rusher, yeah, you better be freaky in those other areas to overcome the areas that are not that freaky looking. Yeah. And you're right, yeah. Micah Parsons, just to go back to that, 6'3", 245, right? So this guy's inch shorter, seven pounds lighter, but definitely faster. I can say that, with, and Micah's the man, don't get me wrong. Yeah. His 10 is, I mean, his first step is it's, it's as good as elite receivers in the NFL, right? This kid. And then, believe it or not, he has more length. He's got a longer arm than Micah Parsons too, which bodes well, you know. But this guy, these guys, like to me, again, even though you worry about that, yeah, I don't want to be in the trenches too long. I, guys like this, again, they're just made for the NFL right now with what we got, and like we've talked about, even like what we talk about with teams, like, hey, we got two tight ends on the field, you got to stop the run. Hey, next play, those tight ends are still on the field, but we split them out of receiver. Right, and this is where guys like him can come into. Oh wait, I can cover that tight end man to man, or I can be another pass rusher, whatever. Or I can be a stand up linebacker, and I can play zone coverage. And that's where these guys have great value too. It's not just as a pass rusher. We have some of his pro day video, so we can scout live on the podcast. Yeah, let's Here's see it. I saw a, a few of see. these clips. I mean, you know what I want to say right away. What is that? Look at those thighs. Oh yeah. I mean, look. If you want to know oh. why he's turning the corner at four three. It's because he's got thighs like that. And, dude, the dude brings it. I just want everybody to know. This ain't some, like, pretty boy, fast pass rusher or anything like that. 
This dude is like pulling guards coming at him full speed, and he's like, huh, stop right there in the hole because I'm going to stop you, and then I'm going to yeah. make the tackle. So that's where I love them. You you? Know, if he was all speed and that, I wouldn't love him. you got to have a physicality element for me to you know, love you like that, and I, I like yeah. this guy. Yeah. He looks almost bigger there than he does in, in his uniform. It's like a, he looks like a giant human that being. That number four at Georgia. Kind of, right? yeah. He looks smaller. And that's what I, you know, again, schools, there's no more school. School is football. Yeah. Lift more weights. Eat more nutrition. He's going to be 245 by the time training camp comes. And it's going to be seven pounds of muscle. And he won't run 439 anymore. He'll run 4395. Okay. Yeah. But he'll be seven pounds stronger and be better off. Yeah. And apparently he's a bit of a team leader, too, because I think there was something that uh, we talked about at the end of last college season. Remember when all the Georgia players were saying, you know, they picked us to go 7-5 and this year. And everyone was like, who is that? Is that like Are those the same people that were doubting the Chiefs that they were going to be good this year? (laughs) (laughs) Where They they didn't exist. (laughs) Everyone doubted us. Be like, no one doubted you. No one. Um, (laughs) We all thought you were going undefeated again. (laughs) Apparently Nolan Smith had something to do with that, and so I think he talked on a podcast, and I think we have that sound, Kristen. I thought we was going to go seven and five. We end up perfect. I could talk trash now because I'm done. I'm a dog for life, and I will always be a dog. Sometimes you got to juice it up for the guy, especially when you're old man last year. I just wanted everybody to know. I said it I said it the whole summer. They're going to think we're going seven and five, guys. They ain't even thinking about a 2 So You made that entire thing up. You just picked that out of the air. You're like, all right, I'm just going to throw seven and five. That sounds disrespectful enough. Yeah, 75 is, like, disrespectful enough, and that's what, like, Coach Smart did. I think not to disrespect any of the other teams, but I think Coach Smart went, like, 8-4, and four, like, his first year. So I was like, yeah, 75, though, sounds better, and it sounds better off the tongue, 75. <laughs> that's <great>. amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Odd. And the teammates bought into it. Yeah, well, you know, when he which, talks, again, yeah, that's what leads in a locker room, though, a little personality and then talent. Talent leads, you know. In the NFL locker room, it's talent and money leads, right? The guys yeah. who got you know, usually the guys that are talented have all the money. So you're like, <laughs> let's follow him. He's but yeah, this guy's got it all, man. He really does, and it's just amazing. You know, I just think I'm sitting there thinking of him. I'm just going, damn Georgia. I mean, are they unbelievable, Georgia? Yeah. Trayvon Walker, him, Jalen Carter, two defensive tackles last year went in the first round. I mean. You know, a line, another stand-up linebacker went in the first round last year. What they're doing right now is historic. I mean, it really is. They got and they got, you know, like top-tier NFL defensive lines, not college defensive lines. Like these are top-tier. Like you put an NFL uniform and you go, this is this one of the better defensive lines in football? Oh yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's sick what they're like, doing right now. Honest to goodness, like yeah. this is often compared, right? Good that college team beat this, but if you just took like the defense of Georgia, some of their best players over the last three or four years, yeah, that would be a very very good defense in the NFL. Definitely, definitely. Where a lot where of those people, guys have gone in the first round, where people are are a little wrong with those comments because like yeah you're right and if they had like but the experience in the nfl game for people to think they're just going to jump in and do that that's where it's like i want to say no but the talent yeah and where they'll be you know to what you're saying yeah it's top notch and it's it's special it's just yeah it's development letting me how do i play this play how do we co- how do you do how do you adjust to that that's the stuff that the young yeah. kid has that you know uh, has to doesn't have the advantage of against a, a veteran player in the nfl yeah like three years post-graduation if you assembled all these exactly. guys did it back that together way. again. Exactly. You'd go, oh, shit, defense. this is the best defense in football. There's no doubt. Yes. All right, I'm sold. I'm sold because, you know, after watching Tyree Wilson and Luke Van Ness and yeah. watching Nolan you were Smith, little, I was like, eh, yeah. I know he's fast, right. but he's smaller, right. and I don't right. know if that's going to work. But I'm sold after having uh, talked to him I about think you and, would. I think if we watched more two together and you really got into the nitty-gritty, you'd start to go, oh, okay, wait, this dude's a little more physical than I'm giving him credit for, you definitely, know, and yes. doing that. And that, that's what it really put me over the edge with him. He plays with violence that's yeah, for sure he does. despite his uh smaller size all right so he is number three for you yep yo 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 thanks for watching homies it's the off season but you know there's no off season for us here at unbutton me ahmed farid we're gonna hit all the stories so hit subscribe for us okay we got a ton coming up my draft prospect rankings my sims top 40 quarterback countdown and videos of me and nfl qbs playing catch and talking about their development and mechanics again thanks for watching remember to subscribe peace out homies see you soon